So earlier this year, Bubble shipped an update to their icon element. Just add another one here so you can see it, icon element. And what's really nice is that, well, for one, they've got a few different icon libraries here. Phosphor in particular is a great library, loads and loads of icons here in a whole bunch of different styles as well. So there, it basically eliminated the need for most apps to use some kind of third-party icon library. There's just a lot here that's built in, uh, and that's great. They also allowed them to be used within buttons. So you could have an icon and a label inside of a button, and most of you probably already know this, and that works really, really well as well. But one of the big drawbacks of the icon library is that you cannot define the icon dynamically based on its name. And what I mean by that, you know, here we've got a little dashboard page, and this is using the basis UI template and uh, design UI kit, which I highly recommend. But as you can see here, you know, these are all icons that are being used from the by bubble icon element, and this is how it's implemented. And we're actually using here a repeating group of navigation items, right? So we've got home, customer, search, setting. All of these are coming from an option set, home, customer, search, settings. But I can't have natively in Bubble the ability for me to say, okay, for home, I want to show the Phosphor home icon, right? For customers, I want to show the Phosphor customers icon. If you go to all of these icon libraries have their own website where you can usually do a search and like these are all of the names. So it'd be really nice if I could just pass in this name here, align center horizontal. If I could just paste that and use that dynamically in my application so that I can have the equivalent of, you know, instead of hard coding the icon here, what I really want to do is just be able to add in a, dy a dynamic expression here that says, you know, this nav items icon and just pass in, pass in that name. And so a lot of you are having to work around that by things, by a strategy like this, where you've basically got a whole bunch of conditional statements that say, all right, if the navigation item or if the thing that you're evaluating is X, then set the icon to this. If it's this, then set the icon to this, right? And that's just obviously not that scalable, not that maintainable. And so while we wait for Bubble to allow us to do this kind of dynamic uh, population of this field, which they should do, lots of people in the forum have asked for it, and it's an obvious evolution of this feature. So I'm feeling confident they will do it when I don't know, but while we wait, we can use a script. So if you go under your SEO meta tag settings, okay, I've got the script that I'm gonna give to you here somewhere in the comments probably and paste that in, okay? And this is going to provide a global function, right? Global JavaScript function. If you're not familiar with JavaScript, just think of this as a custom event that you can call from anywhere in your application and that we're gonna call in kind of a, kind of a hacky behind the scenes way. And quick thing, by the way, very important. This script tag in header section will not work if you're on a free plan. So if you're on the free plan, the way around this is not to put it inside of here, but rather put it inside of an HTML element that you tuck away somewhere in a way that it doesn't break the, the layout of your page. Even better, you know, I've got kind of a nested structure here where this main nav block actually sits inside of the side nav block and the side nav block ends up sitting inside of this app page. Like even better would be to just put the HTML on like the highest level in that hierarchy. So this app page, for example, and and then any of the children elements here, no, no matter where they are downstream in that hierarchy will then be able to work with this function that, that I'm about to show you. All this custom event, all this function is gonna do is let us dynamically set the value of, of that icon, just as we've explained. And the way that we use this, we're going to need a plugin called Classify and make sure that you are up on the latest version. And Classify, if you haven't already used it, this is an absolute powerhouse plugin. 
really great. The f uh, creator of this plugin, Julian, shout out to him. He's on his honeymoon right now, and he still found the time to fix some bugs with this plugin that I encountered while I was trying to prep for this video. So Hero, this plugin allows us to, to run JavaScript in the context of a particular element. So you can see here, I've got kind of some example usage. So these square brackets here, these square brackets are designed to encompass JavaScript. And this is what classify then passes. It passes, or in, in, in other words, it interprets everything between these square brackets as JavaScript and then execute, okay? And all that this is doing is calling a function. If you know a little bit about JavaScript, then you'll be able to follow this. It's calling a function that's gonna do all this magical stuff, which you don't really need to care about. And to which, let's be honest, ChatGPT probably used Claude, did most of the work there anyway. So what we want to do is we want to we want to put that that script there inside of the ID attribute field here for for the icon in question. You can see here that uh, this isn't working right now, okay? But if I grab something that I know is going to be functional, so Acorn, for example, this is probably because star which I've currently kind of hard coded here, star is not actually working. So if I set this to be corn, it's still not working. And this is good to go through. The other reason why it's not working is you might have this fill type uh, incorrect. So if I could set this, so see how it says fill and I've got filled, right? So that is also going to lead to an error. So if I change it there to filled, and by the way, if it's not working, you know, get in the habit, just go into your dev tools, look in the console and look here, there is an issue with this icon that I have loaded. And there you go, we got icons with the fill type. But that's obviously not what we want. We want to pass this in dynamically. And so then wherever your data source might be different than mine, but very common use case here is tabs, a number of different selections where you've got text and an icon sitting nicely together. So what I've got here in this repeating group as the source is a list of these uh, option sets, main navigation list. And so I am going to um, create a new attribute on this option set. I'm just going to call icon, right? And it's going to be of type text because this is actually just going to hold the name of that icon, right? The label for that icon. And then I can just set this value for each of these. And so what I like to do is depending on the icon library I'm using is just go in and have a little search and see what they've got. And there it says house. Okay. That's what I want for my home for customers. You know, just type it in customer, anything come up? No, something that's similar to a customer that is often used user, right? And maybe I want to say users for to represent the fact that I've got loads of customers because I'm so fantastic users for, is that what it was? Yeah. Search. So you get the idea, right? You get the idea about how this will work, magnifying glass. I'm gonna be lazy here and just copy it. And I'm just gonna delete the last two here because you know, just time. You get the picture with just three. And then within my script down here, right? I'm just gonna set this acorn value here. I'm gonna set this to be the parent groups thing icon, right? The icon field that we just set. And then maybe I don't want fill here as the default option, right? Maybe I want it just to be regular, regular. And already you probably are gonna imagine what's gonna happen when I load this page. We're gonna see those icons update dynamically. And you know, just as a quick little aside, you know, if you go into your dev tools and you inspect these icons, you can kind of see where or how this plugin no, it's not even a plugin, right? It's just some code that I'm giving you <clears throat> how it works, right? Because you can see here that there is this, this SVG element and then inside some properties, including this href, which if you inspect it, right, it includes a few things like house, which is obviously the name and regular, right? And you can test out how this is working. Like if I just replace this, with acorn, right? It's going to become an acorn. If I just replace this bit with fill, right? It's going to be filled. So that kind of gives you 
a clue as to how everything's functioning and really bubble should just expose the ability for us to change these properties within the properties panel for an icon but in the meantime this is a nice little hacky workaround i'm not putting this in a plugin because i don't think it's worth the effort because it's probably going to change very soon so here you go now if you want to have a different value when your tabs are highlighted right well then it's just a matter of let's just right click and copy this and then you'll obviously have some state that manages what happens when the current tab is this tab, right? We can actually remove all of these guys. And so one of the other things that I might wanna set here in my expression, which is evaluating, right, is the current section that I've got here in the URL. Is that the section that we're evaluating here, right, on the left? So I can just right click paste, put this in, and then maybe I just set this to something like fill. And also note how like icon color, that's not being touched by this script at all. So you can still use that to, you still use that property just like you would uh, in any conditional expression. So here we go. Now home is filled, customer is filled, search is filled. So there you go. Now get on bubble and ask them to make this a native feature so you don't have to do all this random hacky stuff.